So 22 years ago, this is where my journey into positive psychology and mindset started. However, I didn't know that at the time. But 22 years ago, I had a physical episode. I was in my fourth year of university and I lost the functionality of the right side of my body. Uh, came out of nowhere, left field. Uh, it uh, obviously threw a little wrench in life. <laughs> and it didn't happen instantly. It was like gradually over a few days, I started to not be able to like clench my hand and my foot started dragging. So I went to the hospital. It was init initially diagnosed as having had a stroke. I was 21, um, but it was later re-diagnosed as multiple sclerosis because it, at the time there was only one lesion at the brain, on the brain in the first scan and then they could see multiple lesions, then it became multiple sclerosis. Um, so this is the interesting part of this, the whole story is quite fascinating. In that moment, the doctors said, you may or may not regain functionality, like we're not, it's, 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 you can't confirm anything, you know, prognosis for a stroke or prognosis for multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis, there's no cure, it's typically degenerative. The good news is, this is 22 years ago and I'm, I'm pretty good right now, so you know there's a happy ending. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing was in that moment, I heard the prognosis, I heard what they said, and for some reason, I, I believed the diagnosis, I could see the brain scans, I chose not to believe the prognosis. And my family thought, you know, the poor girl, she, I don't think she heard the doctor. I don't want her to have false hope, right? Because they care. And I'm like, what even is false hope? Anyone who has experienced any miracles in life or any extreme success in any area had hope, even if it was against the odds. And so I had this, and this is a, this is a really critical piece of the story because I didn't realize it at the time that this unwavering faith and belief, like 0% doubt, it was just a fact, I got this, I'm good, I'm gonna recover, don't worry about me, right? And while I'm hanging out, I'm like, uh, except, yeah, mom, in the meantime, until I get there, could you tie my shoe and <laughs> blow dry my hair? Because <laughs> I couldn't use my right side. Um, but I didn't have any doubt that I wasn't going to recover. So. What do you think happens when you have 100% faith that you're going, you're going to, whatever the thing is that you're going to overcome or achieve, when you have 100% faith, 0% doubt, I know it's guaranteed, what kind of actions do you think you take? Anyone want to guess? Look, it's okay if you don't catch it. Positive actions <laughs> is the right answer, Sarah. <laughs> I... I said the words, I can and I will. I, I'll figure this out. I, will, I would never have said the words, I've tried everything. I would never have said the words, why bother, there's no cure. Just have to accept my fate. This is what it is. I'm not saying that, I'm not suggesting that it's bad to have said that, if that's how you truly were feeling. And if, if I had been feeling that way and said those things, do you think it's possible that the trajectory of my life could have been different? Right? So because I said I, I will and I believe and I 100%, it's not just thinking, it's a core belief. Because I felt that way, I did whatever it takes. I met with many naturopaths and nutritionists and chiro and also, and my neurologists, like medical and, and natural health, did all the things. There was no amount of time or money that would be a hindrance, especially when you're paralyzed. <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> but because I believed it, it was not like, if one person said, this probably isn't gonna work for you, I didn't just end there. You know, right? When you know it inside, it's not even a, it's not even a belief. It wasn't a belief, it was a knowing. So the trick is <laughs> to recreate that level of conviction and belief in other areas of life. It took me 10 years to figure out that that was the core of my healing, was my belief. I did follow a protocol, and I can share that at, at, at separately if you want to learn, Like, because I, I did follow, change my diet, I did change my lifestyle, I did change a lot of things in my life, and I do believe all of those things were a factor, a very important factor. But I know, and I also know because I worked, I opened a health food store a few years, a few years later, actually it was 
it might have been almost 10 years after that episode, after I'd healed, I'd done all this work, I'd studied nutrition, I decided to go in and open a health food store because I wanted to help people with health because I believed that, I, that my nutrition and lifestyle had healed me. And then I found for three years that it wasn't just the protocol. They would know what to do but not do it. Or they would say all these things like, that won't work for me. I'm not the kind of person who can do that. I can't afford that. I don't have time for that. I, I, there's all these things. I was like, but you said you want it. And I, here's the thing that will work if you do it. <laughs> and I can't guarantee. That I'm, not a med I'm not, this is not medical advice. Um, I just found that there, I, I found that so many people, there was almost 2,000 people through that health food store business that most of the time there was a mental factor that was blocking their ability to achieve their goals or heal if it was treated a condition, right? And it was like they identified with it. I am this way. I have this thing. I'm not the kind of person who can. Instead of just saying, like, I'm amazing, and up until now, I've had this habit that hasn't served me. <laughs> Instead of, I'm the kind of person who can't wake up early. Awesome. All right, so I want to share with you guys a, a concept that hopefully, and this, we only got two more minutes, hopefully you can still see me. I'm going to back up a little. I'm going to share Psychology 101. So I'm Nicole Kernahan. I mentioned my first name, I think, to most of you, but I am a positive psychology coach. Sometimes we call it high performance coaching and I run a coaching company called Elevated Worldwide. They're actually based out of the US, but I'm here in St. Thomas. And for the past 10 years, uh, sorry, nine years now, I guess, I have transitioned fully into the power of the mind and how to shift how you think into how you feel and how you feel into your actions and how that change, your actions will change your results. So I wanna draw this little diagram and then I'm gonna share with you one tip, like I said at the beginning, you're gonna have one tip today. What does that look like? A sick person with a hat. A person? A sick person? It is a sick person. This is you. And I'm gonna break down psychology 101 what you are. You are made up of what you think, the thoughts that you have in your head. Those thoughts in your mind, what you think, those are, we call, refer to as conscious. You're, you might have some, you're consciously aware of your thoughts, things that you're consciously aware of. What, how, what you think causes how you feel. So this goes down. What you think causes how you feel. What you think repeatedly causes how you feel. If you think repeatedly, I can't, I'm not good enough, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time, there's not enough, there's never enough, I'm not enough. If you constantly think that, you better believe very quickly that is how you feel. Feeling is an emotion. If you want to know what you think, ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? Because that's probably going to, you can, you can do it backwards and say, how am I feeling? Okay, that probably means that there's some thoughts that are not serving. What you, what you think causes how you feel, how you feel causes, I would refer to it as energy. This is kind of harder to describe. It, it's, it's like a vibration, it's like, right? It's like, a, it's an energy in your body. When you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling really stressed and overwhelmed, your body is anxious, right? There's like an energy that's coming off of you. People can feel it even if you don't say any words when you're anxious and you're overwhelmed and you're stressed. When you're calm and you're chill and you're feeling love and you're feeling grateful, right? There's a calm energy about you, there's a calm, Vibe. People can feel it even when you don't speak. They can feel it just in your presence. Hopefully you felt my vibe. Um, so energy, and then your energy moves into your actions. And your actions create your results. Whoa, we lost power. That's interesting. Whoa. Is this our vibe? Did I do feel <laughs> like uh, too much just like too much energy? I burned out the lights. Oh my! Sorry, went too far. So what you think causes how you feel. How you feel causes an energy in your actions, and it's the energy in your actions that produce your results. Right? 
Because you know two people can take the same action and get a different result. It's not the action, it's the energy in the action. If you're, if someone, if you're in sales, I don't know how many of you are, when you're, when you're working, if you're in sales, you can tell. Two people could say the exact same script, have the same background, have the same education, have the same product to offer, the same service to offer, and you, they will both, they can create completely different results in their sales, and the, the people on the receiving end can feel very differently interacting with those people. It's not the action, it's the, the attitude, the energy, the beliefs, the feelings in the action, okay? So there's two primary perspectives, and then I'm gonna wrap up here. Um, and I, I alluded to some of this already. I like to refer to, they, we, we like to kind of refer to it as these two sides. Okay, so this side here, this, this is your left side, right? Is your left? This left side we'll call lack, and the right side we'll call abundance. We have found that about through, a, through, a, through research from Gallup, they're a company that studies human potential and people, that about 80% of the population spend most of their time in this energy of lack. And the thing, what lack looks like is, I don't have enough, there isn't enough, I'm not enough, I can't, I don't want to, I should, I have to, I ought to, right? All those words, fear, worry, doubt, anxiety, stress, on the abundance side, that is love, gratitude, peace, excitement, joy, I can, I will, I am able, I am choosing, I want to, I get to. <clears throat> now the goal is to spend more time over here and less time over here, right? The goal is not to spend 100% of your time in abundance, I mean, that might be a nice goal, but we're human, so it's unlikely to spend 100% of your time there. The goal is to spend more time on the side of love, gratitude, excitement, peace. I can, I will, I'm able, I'm choosing, I get to, I want to, I have enough, there is enough, I am enough, and less time in the, in the space of the other side of that. And when you are on the other side of that, it's not even, try not to judge yourself as this is good or bad, it's just, is it working for you? Is it working for you if you're in a space of, I can't, I don't have enough, there isn't enough, I'm not good enough, I have to, I should, I ought to, like all those words and thoughts are, is it, is it working for you? If it's not working for you, so, so, so I hope this one little piece of takeaway is to like, if it's not working for you, then you can just be willing to change it. Rather than judging it as bad or good, it's just, is it working for you or not working for you? Sometimes you're like, it's working for me, I'm angry right now and I need to be in this and I'm just gonna let it out, and that's fine. Let it out, <laughs> it's working. And then, you know, within five to 60 minutes, <laughs> not within five to six days, you know, you can shorten the amount of time that you spend in those states and spend more time in the positive state. All right, so the, I might have caught on to this, but the one tip, do you have any thoughts or questions, first of all, just about these, this, I don't know how much, if, if any of you have heard this before, heard these concepts of what you think, cause how you feel, you feel it moves into energy, energy moves into action, you actually produce your results, and then identifying that there's two primary states. Primary, there's, there's people who spend primarily most of their time on the left or the black side, and there's people who spend the prim primary most of their time on the bright side or the abundant side. And the goal for most humans is to spend more time, be not because you have to or you should or you ought to, just because it feels better and it works better. <laughs> it delivers better results in your life when you spend more time on the right. Do you have any thoughts or questions on that? And then I have, do you agree that it feels better to be on the right side? more often it is obvious like i think it's obvious but so but then 80 percent of people spend time on the left in <laughs> lack so it seems obvious but it's not subconsciously we're not programmed that way that's why most people who have been in jail if you go into jail we have two coaches that i've worked with who've done this and ask them okay how many of you are coming back here how many of you this is your last time in jail this is, you're never coming back into this place everyone raises their hand and then the second question is, how many of you, is this your second or third time here? And almost the same amount raise their hand. It's not their fault, it's their programming. They're programmed 
to live in this. And so we want to program you to live in the right side. So my final, my final tip is to use the power of your words. This is like so simple, it seems too easy. And I guarantee if you're intentional with, using, with shifting your words, it absolutely, if you're intentional with changing your words, your words are a reflection of what you think. If you change your words, you're now choosing to think something different. If you repeatedly choose to think something different, it's gonna change how you feel, which will change your energy, which will change your actions, which will change the results, and it influences everyone around you. Your kids, your spouses, your partners, your friends, like everyone feels it when you spend more time over there. So if you can put your hands, I don't know if you can, but put your hands on your body somewhere, your heart, your chest, and say out loud the words, I have to. Can you say it? Yeah, say it, say it, say it, I have to. I need to. I can't. I have to stop smiling when I'm saying this because it's confusing you. <laughs> I'm trying to get into the left side for a second. There's not enough. There's not enough. I don't have enough. There's not enough time. I don't have enough time. I'm not enough. I've got to practice this one because I smile so much that it's hard for me to get into the feeling of what that feels like. Let's try the other side. I am choosing. I get to. I can. I want to. There is always enough. I am always enough. Like the the reason I have you on your because we're trying to feel the feeling of it, right? The vibe of it, kind of thing. Like you feel the difference when you say the words "I have to" versus "I am choosing to." So the, 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 and maybe I can write these up so that you can see them somewhere, all the words. So if you catch yourself saying, I have to make dinner and then I have to do this and then I need to do this other thing, to catch yourself and say, I'm going to choose to make dinner tonight. Maybe I could choose not to. I'm going to choose to make dinner. I'm going to choose to put the baby to bed. You, your, your mind's going to play tricks with you because you're like, you're not choosing it, you have to. That's why you got to do it with repetition. Eventually, you can start to believe that, wait, this is a choice. I am choosing this. I get to do this. I am able to do this. I am enough. If you repeatedly, just for 30 days, catch yourself and, and use powerful language with emotion, you're going to hear the voice that says, exercise? I thought you said extra fries. <laughs> You're gonna have the two voices. So you have to kind of continuously feed the, the positive one. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We better wrap up. Um, we, we're a few minutes over. <laughs> Hopefully you got some insp inspiration and are you ready to choose some different words? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good reminder. For yes. Yeah. It's like so simple. But it's so hard. It's so easy to do. It's so easy not to do. And you wouldn't, you would be shocked at how many times you're probably saying the thing that you, that is the opposite of that. Awesome. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Um,